Fantastic. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Tal from Visuality Systems. Nice to, nice to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Uh, with me, uh, uh, co-hosting Stephen French. And right here, I swear. And uh, together on, in the panel, we have uh, Jeremy from Google, the Samba team, Brad from Apple, Lilia from Visuality System, Gingis from Microsoft, and Paolo from SUSE. Uh, today, we're here to show you how the SMB client works together. Uh, all the environment can seemingly speak to each other, talk to each other uh, quite seamlessly, quite uh, easy, simple, and that's what we're going to show you from different kind of uh, environment, different operating systems, uh, all working on the same on the same server. And uh, let's go forward. So a bit about the SMB protocol. It was initially developed by Barry Feigenbaum from IBM in uh, in the 80s, and it provided the shared access to file and printer on the network. Unlike other a network protocol like HTTP and FTP, we're not talking about just transferring a file or uh, copy a file. Uh, it's also uh, giving access to the server itself. In the 90s, Microsoft basically uh, took over the protocol, rebranded, called it SIFS, uh, a common internet file system. And ever since then, um, the SMB protocol is part of all the Microsoft OSs uh, until today. During the years, there was uh, upgrades all the time. With Windows Vista, the SMB was upgraded from SMB1 to SMB2. Uh, now we have a much less chatty protocol and with more security uh, enhancement. And with Windows uh, 8, there was a release of SMB version 3 with encryption uh, and, uh, and more uh, security enhancements, more, more features. And today we have SMB 3.1.1, which is the latest one today, uh, quite popular. Uh, and all of, all, of, all, of, all of the environment you will see today support SMB 3.1.1. So what are we going to do here? Uh, we have different environments, different implementation of the protocol, and we want to show you how each and every one of us can connect to the same server and play together, do some stuff. You'll see in a say, you'll you'll shortly see what we're gonna do. Um, the server that we're gonna connect to is the Azure server. So let's see what client what. Uh, popular uh, major clients are available today. Obviously, Microsoft client. Microsoft has a built-in SMB server and SMB client since uh, the, the 90s. <coughs> um, it's in any environment. Microsoft is also in charge of the, of the, pro of the documentation of the protocol. So every, uh, every, every time they release a new protocol, there are also documentation that the community can use freely uh, as part of, um, uh, of, the new, of the other implementation working by the Microsoft specifications. Apple, uh, Apple have their uh, own implementation of the SMB protocol since 2012 with the release of macOS 10.8, the mountain, mountain lion version. Apple also has in their Macintosh both client and server versions and uh, all of them support also S uh, SMB version 3.1.1. Um, the idea is, was uh, to better interact better uh, in, in, interpret with the, in, uh, with the Microsoft, with the Windows environment. Other than the Macintosh, also um, in the last four years, micro, uh, Apple also implements the SMB client in iPhones. Uh, so we talked about the Microsoft environment, we talked about the Macintosh environment, now we move to the Linux environment, Steve. Okay, thank you. So this is a super exciting, as you know, Samba 
has an SMB client and server. A lot of people forget that it has an FTP-like tool that is <clears throat> used for all kinds of backup scenarios. It's also used for, I use it every time just to test, is that share available? Right, like for a demo like this. So people use it all the time for quick and dirty stuff, but it also has a rich set of libraries, over three and a half million lines of code to look through stuff, and it's available for plug-in for many other purposes, and it's under the GPL v3 license. Now I maintain the kernel client, which is a completely separate code base from Samba. There's a tiny bit of user space code shared, but but very different. It's under the GPL v2 license like the rest of the kernel. And there's a SIFS utils repo that has things like ACL management utilities and some other things. And completely different than Samba, but this is the kernel file system driver to allow you to get transparent access to files as if it's a local file system. There's also a very confusing thing. There's the SMB client libraries we just talked about in Samba. There's also a lib SMB2 uh, maintained by Ronnie Salberg. And this is embedded in the Linux media player, for example, and he likes to bring up that any of you using a PlayStation really should be using this, because apparently he thinks that's the coolest use case, uh, SMB libraries in the PlayStation. It's very interesting. It has an LGPL license, so it's used for a different set of applications sometimes than Samba. It's LGPL v2+. LGPL v2+, sorry, thank you. And um, very different than the Samba libraries, but is used for some other cases. All right, so we had the Microsoft environment, we had the, the Apple environment, we have the Linux environment, and now with the visuality systems, we're talking about all other operating systems. Uh, the visuality systems product can support up to 60 oper different operating systems existing in the market today. Um, the visuality systems is a commercial product, client and server, and the, on the client side, there are two clients, one, written in C, and that's more for the embedded world, for the IoT uh, devices. And a second client written in Java, uh, that made more for Java applications and uh, Android applications. Uh, all products support SMB 3.1.1. And one more thing that uh, we will present here is our, uh, is the Visuality Systems uh, Android file manager, a new file manager that support SMB Quick. And I will explain about SMB Quick now for those of you who are not familiar with that. Uh, the SMB over Quick is an entire new protocol. It's uh, an al alternative to TCP. It comes with a built in TLS 1.3 encrypted VPN and allows connectivity from uh, Windows and, as I mentioned, Android to access data over the internet. Uh, it was introduced in Windows 11. And with uh, Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition, also Azure files are working on their implementation, which hopefully will come soon. And through Android, through the VS File Manager application. Uh, today, 30%, about 30% of the network uh, of the internet traffic goes through Quick, through Edge and uh, Home brow Chrome browser. Um, and it's increasing every day now. Everything inside Quick is always encrypted with AES 128 or 256. By default, it uses port 443, which initially was designed in a way to be accessible through firewalls that use the port for HTTPS. But uh, it can be also configured to any other port. So as I said, the, those are the clients that we wanted to, we will show you in a sec. Uh, we are all going to connect to Azure, which is the biggest SMB server in the world in terms of usage. It supports a wide variety of workload, but does, does implement small subset of SMB features compared to Windows Server. Um, the Azure file server requires um, encryption, so any, any version from SMB3 with encryption and above can connect it. And as I mentioned, all of our products here that will show you all of the implementation support SMB311. Um, and also um, SMB over Quick will be presented uh, with the Azure as well. So uh, without further ado, let's begin. Uh, Liliel, you'll, um, you'll upload a file a PPT file to a share, to a host share on Azure. Hi. 
Uh, my name is Lilia. I'm from Visualty Systems. Uh, I will present um, our embedded client uh, developed in C. Um, I'm going to mount right now the Azure uh, uh, server, share actually. Yeah. It will take a while. Okay. Uh, let's see the list of um, uh, of folders. Excuse me. I have no idea. You just know how. Sorry. Everyone will. <laughs> yeah. Um, Here is a list of shares uh, of uh, of folders uh, under the share I recently mounted. We can see uh, opened. We are a Windows client. That's the same. And now I will upload the the presentation recently we've seen up to the share. Uh, we work in SNIA folder, right? Uh, so uh, I have it ready. Here it is. Uh, let's go. As always, demo is a demo. <laughs> and here it is. Let's, here it is. So. All right, now we go forward to Jeremy. All right. Thank you. Uh, just want to make it um, very clear I'm not here on behalf of Google. Um, there are no Google lawyers have but, you know, um, seen this presentation, know what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I'm a a rogue employee right now. I'm representing the Samba team. Um, so if I can just switch over the... So if you've ever wondered what it is that we are doing in that lab at the end of the hall, making this work is what we're actually up to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, hopefully you can see that. I can make it a little bit bigger if... Yeah? Um, so this looks really, really simple. She was able to mount it, copy stuff up. I'm going to start by using the SMB client. If you're very quick, you can copy the uh, password there and you can get access to and delete all our presentation. But, um, so there we are. I, I've connected using our, um, S as you can see, user local Samba bin SMB client. This is an unreleased version of Sam uh, of the client that I've been messing with that does DFS path names. So the great thing about this is that it all works together. And that's one of the things that we do. We work very hard on in the Introp labs and in other places is making sure all our products seamlessly work together. So if I do an LS, you can see what's in there. Uh, including all the temporary files and everything. So if I cd into SNIA, uh, as I said, this is the command line client usually used for backups. And there is the um, presentation at the end there. And you can see the size and everything. Just this is your standard FTP-like client. So yes, very dull, very ordinary. So let's show you something cool. Uh, a file manager, ooh. Um, and here's, here's a bookmark that I added earlier. So if I click on that, uh, there you go. It has now mounted the Azure file server and you can see that there is the Sneer presentation, which I am now going to deface um, by opening it up with LibreOffice because obviously this is Linux and I'm an open source guy. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert an image uh, and let's see pictures. Let me put my ugly face in there. There you go. So you may or may not know that I used to be, uh, I used to run the quiz show at uh, the Linux World, um, Linux Foundation events. And that was one of the costumes I wore. If you remember your Star Trek, um, I was, uh, one of the guys with the invisible spaceship. Um, I, I believe I actually wore that costume uh, the first time I ran the quiz and Microsoft turned up for the first time at a, a Linux Foundation event. 
And so that was that was great fun. Um, we had um, Bill Hilf, I think it was, dressed as Darth Vader and a bunch of stormtroopers um, fighting the, uh, the the Linux uh, founders. I can't remember who won actually. So there you go. Just just showing. So here's LibreOffice. Now the great thing about this is, if you notice, LibreOffice is just accessing this as a mounted file system. It doesn't know the difference between local and Azure. It's just accessing it. Uh, remotely, I've added a, and th this is the part I haven't tested, so let's see if this works. I should be able to save, hurrah. Oh, shall I use ODF format? No, probably not. Uh, I'll keep it as PowerPoint, and I believe if the, if it works correctly, it's saved, hurrah. <laughs> no, so that was, that was a bit of a stressful event. So uh, this is libsmb client in action. So libsmb client is the set of libraries that underlie the FTP client uh, and right here it's using GNOME 3. They are a plugin into GNOME 3. You can plug them in into anywhere. In fact, uh, Google Chrome OS uses the libsmb client libraries to provide access to uh, SMB resources from Chrome OS and also um, we use the libsmb client libraries or, or parts of the Samba libraries to uh, provide logins to Active Directory from Chrome OS. So they're really useful. You can put them anywhere. Obviously, um, they have to be open source to, to implement them. But anyway, uh, so I, I have opened it. I have defaced the presentation. And I will now hand it over to Brad. So. We have about 20% of the demo work so far. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, we work hard to make. <laughs> Hopefully it's paying off. Okay, I guess I should say I do not represent Google. Um, since I'm from Apple, I'm not going to use a command line because I don't think I know how. So I will mount the server using Finder. And I already have the URL up there. And unlike Jeremy, I keep my password secured in a keychain, so. <laughs> um, I guess we're all in the SNEA folder. I don't think Azure supports WSP or Spotlight. Not the thumbnail with my picture in. How about that? Yep. That's so I am going to try to repair the damage done by Jeremy. <laughs> so goodbye. And I should be able to, let's see. I'm not that familiar with uh, PowerPoint. Actually, can I just drag it in? Ha ha! There you go. Much nicer. Even size it down. And then the moment of truth. We will try and save it. So I get saved. Oh, no, nope, it's trying to save now. <laughs> Spoke too soon. And it's thinking about it. So is this your new plant code or? <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. No. Yeah, I don't know how big the image actually is. So. <laughs> And of course, the great thing is all this is being doing, uh, being done encrypted to the Azure server. Um, so it's trying to save. Okay. It's not having much. Oh, just took it a while. Easy like riding a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. Oh, yes, pass it.
guys ever made this mistake and your wife and her friends snuck in there, found stuff on neighborhood and filled my office and made it usable and look okay? Like, I no longer look like the typical developer enough. I mean, I try to make sure I don't comb my hair and all that, but it doesn't work. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, let me, let me fix this. Notice that the Linux laptop actually displays where you can see and is the easiest to configure. Just you know, making a point. So, the obvious things. Um, and by the way, in Linux, um, we typically, for Azure mounts, have them stored in credential files. We don't typically show them as nicely as Jeremy. Um, so, we're mounted to um, you know, various test shares, but that's the wrong one. So, let me mount. Um, Oops. Okay, so that looks kind of like the right directory, doesn't it? And what confused me for a minute was that uh, it's mounted as an SMB3. So in Linux, you can mount as SMB3 or SIFS. Some people don't like the four-letter word CIFS. I don't know why. But if you look in here, there is a SNEA folder. And in the SNEA folder, we have these boring presentations and things like this. We also have, have some nice pictures. And I think the goal here now would be to open... LibreOffice, not using Jeremy's libraries, but using the kernel, just like you would be if it was on ext4 or a local file system, but mounted to Azure. Um, I don't remember where this data center is, probably in San Antonio or Washington State or something. But um, let's see, is that this? Oh, it could be a, well, let's actually look at the directory and make sure, so this one, right? This one, right? Now, I don't know who this person is, so I think this is a, some sort of security problem. But, <laughs> but what I could do is I could insert a picture, I think. Um, if I remember correctly, I just... Insert image at the top. Insert image. And then, if you guys ever remember the kind of cool things you can do, um, let's see. Do you guys, a quiz question, do you guys know, first of all, where this is, what event it was after, and who the person is? Quiz question. This is a moment in history. The name is David, the name is David. good. <laughs> and his birthday was a few days ago. But uh, why is this important, and where was this? Quiz question, this is important audience. Oh, it was too dark. I know, but... <laughs> Sa Samba XP? Uh, Samba XP, good. In the, in the Turkish um, yeah, it was something <laughs> bathhouse or whatever it was. Yeah, it was, whatever it was it is. A, like German bar with, anyway, needless to say, everybody else is drinking after a hard, intense conference like this. Yeah. It, yeah. it can't be sausalitas because people have their food. Yeah. So. <laughs> so the, the, Sorry. Uh, the trivia uh, here that's important, and this is truly important, is after these stressful conferences, people are drinking. But what am I doing with David Holder, the IPv6 expert of the world? This moment in history is the first yeah. IPv6 mount in history. Yeah. Yeah. And we're actually working on our laptops while these people yeah. are partying after a conference. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, Steve actually was working on the SIFS client code in the middle of a belly dancing presentation <laughs> in, a, in, in Germany. So he's, he's very dedicated. Yeah, I have to admit that's true. Okay, so now we're ready for, for the Windows demo. So let's, um, let me exit this so we don't end up... You gotta save it. <laughs> I, I did, I saved it. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. There you go. Uh, Brad, I'll actually need your uh, USB-C.
Can you guys see this? Okay. Do you make it bigger? One second while we adjust the uh, resolution here. While he's doing this, I had a, a next question for you. So he mentioned IBM invented uh, SMB, and I, we met Barry Feigenbaum came to this one, one year. But one of the things I wanted to ask you guys is, do you remember in the 80s, my first experience with SMB ever as a graduate student in doing stuff with SMB. Remember the company that would have been distributing this stuff? SMB servers back then. Any of you guys remember the dark ages? Companies like that, yeah, for Apple. And then you had 3Com and you had, and you had DEC doing stuff, HP doing stuff. But it was so weird. Yeah, Sun, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, it's fascinating. Even in the 80s, we had Lots of people doing this. All right, so here we have a VM running the latest build of Windows 11, uh, compiled uh, September 12th, just a few days ago. Um, we'll mount a share. Go over to the Z drive. On the Wireshark, we can see activity happening. It's encrypted. Now, I do not have PowerPoint or any other Office apps installed inside this VM, so we'll extend the demo slightly. We'll mount the server, the SMB server, the Windows SMB server running inside this VM to the physical machine over here. So I'll be the Z drive as well. We'll navigate it through here. So let me minimize the VM so there's less confusion. All right, that's the shared file. Let me copy it over from the VM. So this is rather slow. I'm not sure why um, things should be happening locally here. I think it's a five megabyte file. So it might actually be done copying. I'm not sure why the client still thinks this. It's still in progress. Okay, so it's locked.
Well, lo looks like we have something more than a hiccup here. Uh, so from inside the VM, yes, we can um, we can browse the share. It is working. I just don't have PowerPoint still here. What I can do is create a folder. Well, we can look at the pictures. All right, well, we did mount it, yeah. and we've listed you'll the have files. To, you'll have to trust us that Microsoft support SMB. <laughs> 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 that was the mean joke. I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> but you gave it a help. <laughs> well, once it unhangs, I'll come back yeah, here. Sure. And, right. and one nice thing is, like in the Linux example, literally this is the release candidate from a couple weeks ago. He's running release candidates of Windows, right? This, even the current stuff. So we're allowed to have bugs. We are allowed to have bugs. But I think this is more likely a hotel internet thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so next, we want to show uh, SMB over quick. So you give me, I'll take the, I'll take the phone. We're going to take a picture of. All right, I'm going to take a picture of the audience. If someone don't want his wife to see that he's here for some reason, or his husband just hide it for a second. <laughs> All right, one. One, two, three. All right, so we have the picture now. And Lilia will do the magic. We're connecting to the Azure file. The setup is like this. I, I have a virtual machine of uh, server 2022, Azure edition on running on Azure, uh, supporting uh, SMB over quick. Here is the screen. I'm running the capture to, to prove you it's not fooling you. It's quick indeed. And here is the share. And the application is uh, on my phone. I'm mirroring it. Let's see. Uh, first of all, you can see the um, uh, network settings. I've enabled just SMB over quick. Uh, SMB over TCP is disabled here. Uh, the DNS, I'm using the Google one. And uh, let's go to the, here is my uh, prepared chair connection. And right now it is empty. So I'm going to upload uh, the picture. Here it is. And paste. <laughs> A lot of pressure. Let's see. Hmm. In the meanwhile, I will say that uh, the application is quite new. It's on. Yeah. Here we go. What is going on? And it runs uh, MS Quick. Uh, there is no capture, I'm sorry, but here is the picture right inside the shell on the virtual machine. Oh. 
I forgot to start it. Are, are you the first to implement SMB of a quick outside of Microsoft? From what we know, from what we know, yeah. yeah. This one is in Java. That's great. All right, so, so that's what we have to show you. And um, you're welcome to ask any question. We still have time. Yes, Kevin. You're, you're asking who, who are the customers using the, yes. the phone application? And instead of using SMB protocol, they use the That's what you can So again, there are hundreds of file manager applications out there. Uh, but what we showed is the first one and the only one that we are aware of that can support Quick. That's the only application that support Quick. SMB over Quick. Did, did I answer your question? So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, four, four, five is very commonly blocked by ISPs and whatever, but they don't block SMB of a quick. So once SMB of a quick gets more widely adopted, and we're hoping to add that to the Samba client libraries, obviously, and server, um, then at that point, anyone using these these libraries, anyone using these applications, will have direct access into SMB storage. Um, which actually can be more convenient than cloud storage. <laughs> Having said that, trying trying to teach my family to use both. Um, so I can give you an example of this. So we had an amusing thing that happened when I set this up. So I took one of my test shares that you know doesn't have anything secure on it, and I can throw away the password when we're done. And what was interesting to me about that was I couldn't see his presentation, and then it dawned on me. I was using it to test snapshots, you know, previous versions of files. And so I was looking at a previous version of file. Now that's not something you typically do in Google Cloud Storage, right? But it's a file system kind of thing. So file systems are a bigger set of operations, but it struck me when I was opening this, oh, that's why this might be really cool to access SMB over quick. My phone, I could look at a snapshot of how I screwed up that tax return or document or whatever it was. And it's so easy in Azure and I'm sure in other servers too. Anyway, so file systems can do really cool things. And the 445, you know, yeah. Spectrum blocks my stuff at home. When I'm here, it's fine. But it's so nice to be able to access this. So, so as an, another example, uh, large video files, however they may be acquired, <clears throat> um, if you want to share those with friends, uh, very commonly, uh, I believe that there is a, a problem uh, with uploading and downloading files. Um, I think only Google Chrome will do it to, to Google Cloud. Firefox will not download a file over 20 gigs, I think. There's, there's an issue there. It's something to do with the uh, APIs used over HTTP. For SMB, no problem. You just mount it as a local share. You can drag it and drop it directly to your friend's uh, you know, local NAS uh, server or whatever, uh, or, or to a, a cloud store and have them download it back from there. So there are more, there are more uses than, than a blob store. Yeah, and that's a great example. I think you need to open it. Yeah. So this was a fantastic example. My son uh, messaged me while we were at the conference. A friend of his had some useful finance data for research. They're finance majors in college, and he wanted to to save this before his friend deleted it because he thought this might be useful for him. Uh, duh, it's not gonna work to you know, upload it to Google Drive or it's not gonna work. Um, this would have been great for him. He needed it two days ago, so it's a little late, but. Yes, it is. Ah, oh, correct. I didn't repeat the question. Sorry for that. H S W. Uh, the question was uh, if the application is on the Android store. It is. Um, 
we are, we're also working on an iOS application as well with Quick. Don't kill a spread. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Or? This is a different use case for than the um, the standard consumer uh, phone stuff. I mean, it is, you are right. It is very easy to use the inbuilt apps to upload things in a cloud store and have them synced. So this is probably more targeted at uh, enterprise customers who want to share uh, confidential data or, or, or other kind of things, um, you know, in a way that... Um, that you you kind of need file access for rather than um, rather than the the blob store access, um, you know. As, as I'm going to mention in my talk tomorrow, most most sort of consumers who have files they don't know what files are anymore. They don't know where things are stored. If you ask them where things were stored on their phone, they couldn't tell you. So. Yeah, apparently computer science courses have to teach the uh, the concept of a file system to incoming new students because they've, nev they've never run across it before. <laughs> Any other question from the audience? Okay, thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.